Hello, and welcome to your practices webinar on advanced packaging. I'm Ramsey Saleem, your practice lead at Tyndall National Institute, where we focus on system integration and advanced photonics packaging. This webinar continues our series where we step into the world of advanced photonics packaging. And with me today um, is my co-host, Francesco, Dr. Francesco Flores, head of the training programs. Hi, Francesco. Hi, Ramsey. Hi, everybody. We've also got um, Luca Zagaglia, who is helping develop our grating coupler technology here at Tyndall. Hi, Luca. Hi, Ramsey. Hi there. Good to see you both. And um, so we've had three episodes dedicated to grating couplers. And today's episode is a fourth on couplers as well. So Francesco, how did we get here? Well, we started uh, explaining the Bragg law, that is uh, the basis uh, to understand the scattering process, interaction between light and uh, the device. And with that, uh, we build the first type of grating coupler that is called standard grating coupler, the easiest one. So we saw that the pitch is constant and uh, the coupling efficiency around 50%. The next step, second episode on grating coupler, we decided to focus on how to boost the coupling efficiency. And uh, we work mainly in two ways. Uh, the first one was uh, we increased the amount uh, of uh, silicon on top of the grating coupler, the so-called silicon overlay, in order to increase the scattering strength uh, and uh, the second idea was uh, the application uh, of the impedance matching to light. So the structure became from standard to apodized. And we saw that uh, we were able to increase the coupling efficiency up to 7, 75%. If you choose instead of the 220 nanometers, the 340 nanometer platform, you can boost the coupling efficiency up to 80-85%. The third episode was focused mainly on uh, Lucas' work and uh, the particle swarm optimization procedure that we built uh, customized here in Tyndall and uh, mainly it's a routine that can be used inside an FTTD method and uh, you can use uh, as we saw the main parameters of the grating coupler and you can link them, so the geometrical parameters, you can link them to the losses channels, transmittance and reflectance, and the coupling efficiency. So the light that is properly injected inside the again mode of the waveguide. Today, we want to make another step forward and we want to analyze a little bit better, let's say the concept that is behind this coupling efficiency. So not only in terms of uh, intensity, 80, 90, whatever you want percent, but we want to link uh, the coupling efficiency to the band structure of the grating coupler and then to the bandwidth. So we can show that there is a link between the coupling efficiency and the bandwidth of the grating coupler. So in this case, you can see, for example, the structure has a band pass filter and you can choose if you want need to boost more the coupling efficiency or the bandwidth. Cool, that sounds exciting. I'm looking forward to, to hearing about that. A reminder, folks, if you want to catch up on any of these previous episodes that Francesco was mentioning, you can um, watch them on our Europractice YouTube channel. So just search on YouTube for Europractice and there'll be a few different webinar series there. It will be under the uh, Advanced Packaging webinar series. And remember, if you have Q questions, just use the Q&A button and we'll collate these questions and answer them in a dedicated Q&A session after the talk. And um, so what will we learn today then, uh, Luca? So the topic of today is, uh, Francesco already said, the bandpass filter effect. So we are going to see how we can uh, manage the bandwidth, why there is a difference in, in the width of the bandwidth between a uniform and apodized grating copper and um, how, if you want to look at it using either Fourier transform and the band structure concept. Cool, over to you. So I can share my screen. 
So the talk of today is divided into four main parts. <clears throat> there are going to be a general overview on the problem in coupling the light inside the photonic integrated circuit or PICS. And um, this is just uh, a reminder of the importance of breaking copper in, uh, in uh, silicon photonics. And then uh, we're going to talk about briefly the structure of grating copper in order to make a bridge between this webinar and the previous one that was about the design routine that we used to optimize the grating copper. And then we move to the bandpass filter effect. So what's the bandwidth, why there is a difference between uniform and non-uniform grating copper, and how we can study this, this issue. Uh, eventually there is the, the Q&A session as, as always. So, as you know from the previous webinar, grating coupler can be used to match the mode uh, of the sources that we use to inject uh, the light inside the peak and the one sustained by the waveguides of the peak itself. And we can overcome the mismatch between these two modes quite efficiently. So if you remember, we used the design routine explained in the last webinar to design grating coupler and the final outcome of the design routine was this uh, final uh, three-dimensional grating coupler that we were able to import inside uh, 3D FDTD. And using these uh, monitors, we also are able to look at all the parameters that are important from the propagation of the electromagnetic field. So for example, the diffraction process that couples the light towards the waveguide, the focusing effect, the ability of the grating in coupling the light inside the fundamental mode of the, of the waveguide, and then how to manage the losses. So the transmitter monitor and reflector monitors to collect the light that is back reflected and transmitted through the grating and the coupling efficiency monitor to collect the coupling efficiency spectrum. <clears throat> and also in this case, the bandwidth. So we have two different uh, type of grating couplers, uniform grating couplers that have a constant pitch and apodized or non-uniform grating coupler where the pitch is a linear function of the distance. So as you can see on the right, there is a difference in the coupling efficiency spectra. From the peak point of view, using a non-uniform grating coupler, we are able to boost the coupling efficiency at a certain, in this case, energy, so 0.8 electron volts or 15-15 uh, nanometers. And also, <clears throat> we are, in this case, reducing the bandwidth. So the amount of frequencies that we are able to inject efficiently inside the waveguide. Not only this one, we can also note that there is a difference in the shape. So for the uniform grating copper, uh, the shape is uniform on the left and right part respect to the peak, while for the apodized grating copper, there is a more gentle decay on the left side, so for lower energies, and a more sharp decay on the right part. And this is due to the bandpass filter effect. So what we want to study today is why there is this reduction and why we see this different behaviors in the coupling efficiency spectra. So the first tool that we can use is the special Fourier transform of the electromagnetic field emitted by the grating. So uh, practically what we can do is to use again FDTD, put a monitor on top of our structure and collect the light that is emitted by the grating. Then we can do the Fourier transform and what we have is basically the energies sustained by the structure as a function of the in-plane wave vector this is in accordance with the Bragg law, that is basically the law that we use to design grating copper, that link the energies of the wavelength that we want to couple to the angle of incidence <coughs> of the light that we are using to, uh, as a source. So what we can see is that the width of the special Fourier transform for the uniform grating copper is almost the same across the entire energy interval. While for the uh, apodized grating copper, this is not true anymore. And what we can see is that at the bottom, so lower energies, we have this blurry region that is wider. And then the Fourier transform is squeezed at higher energies. So um, if we want to compare these two objects with the coupling efficiency spectra, we can take a cross section to look at the width of this object. And we take the cross section at the value of Kx, so the in-plane wave vector, equal one because this value is related to the angle of incidence and to the wavelength that we use to design grating copper. In this case, 10 degrees and 15-15 uh, nanometers. So if we take this cross section, 
what we can see is that we are able to uh, calculate again the bandwidth using the same meter as for the coupling efficiency spectra. And also we can see that there is a different behavior around the peak. So for the apodesperate coupler, again, we can see that is, uh, there is this a gentle decay for lower energies and a sharp decay for higher energies. And this is related also to this image because we can see that for lower energies, the Fourier transform is wider respect to the higher one. But of course, this is just a cross section. In reality, we are using uh, the, the mode of a single mode fiber, so the fundamental mode as an incident beam. And as you know, the fundamental mode of the single mode fiber has a Gaussian shape. So we can consider also the, the Fourier transform of our source. And we can take the overlap between the Fourier transform of the emission of the grating coupler and the Fourier transform of our source. And what we get is this green region here. And again, we can see the same behavior that we saw before. So for the uniform grating coupler, this green region is more homogeneous, while for the apodized grating coupler, there is always this blurry region for lower energies that is related with this gentle decay in the Fourier transform and in the coupling efficiency spectrum. So now this can be considered as an indirect way to look at the energy sustained by the structure and the wave vector. Now we want to uh, move further. Uh, what we can do is to look at the dispersion of the light inside this structure. And what we can calculate uh, is basically the band structure. Again, we can use the FDTD as a method to evaluate the band structure. We can set our simulation uh, box with periodic boundary condition to mimic uh, just one period of the grating copper. Then we have dipoles inside the simulation block to excite the mode of the structure and the time monitor are used to collect the electromagnetic field and using the Fourier transform, we are able to look at the mode sustained by the grating coupler. And this way we can rebuild the dispersion curve or the band structure. However, there is uh, a problem here. Uh, uniform grating coupler are basically photonic crystals, one dimensional photonic crystal with uniform uh, pitch. So we are able to uh, create quite easily, we can say the band structure. While the same concept cannot be applied directly for apodized grating copper because, because we have a non-uniform structure. But then there is uh, an easy way to also manage the band structure for this uh, object here. And what we can do is basically, first calculate the band structure for the uniform grating copper. And then we can, uh, again, consider uh, as you can see from this pink line in this plot, the, the, the Fourier transform of our incident beam. And we can take the overlap between uh, the Fourier transform of the incident beam and the band structure around the energies linked to the working wavelength. In this case, again, 1550. And we can see that we are able, by taking this uh, region here, to re uh, obtain the bandwidth value. What we can do for the apodized grating coupler is to consider this grating as made of different uniform grating and we can calculate the band structure at each period of the non-uniform grating coupler. And that what we get is um, this graph on the right where we have a slightly more complicated um, situation, we can say. We have three different regions where we have uh, what we call filter it out energies, the bandwidth region and the spectrum asymmetry. <coughs> As you can see here, we have multiple curves and these multiple curves are related to the period of the non-uniform grating copper. So the blue line is the first tooth, then we have the fifth, the 10th and the 15th. In this way, we are covering uh, basically the region that uh, our Gaussian source, our fundamental uh, mode of the fiber is uh, striking. So uh, we can say that the geometrical dimension of the mode um, shines uh, the grating coupler from the first period till the 15th. So if we consider the overlap again between the spatial Fourier transform and the, these multiple band structure curves, we can again, uh, comprehend better the behavior of the Fourier transform and the coupling efficiency spectrum. So first of all, we can fix this uh, first point here 
as a upper limit of our bandwidth. So all the energies that are higher and greater than this point cannot be coupled uh, by the grating itself because they are filtered uh, by this matching, uh, the impedance matching that we have in this type of structure due to the, this varying pitch across the grating cover. Then we have uh, the bandwidth region where the lower limit is fixed at the tenth tooth. And this is because basically the center of gravity of our Gaussian mode that is striking the grating coupler uh, shines on the tenth tooth. So the majority of the energies are coupled uh, in this region of the grating coupler. And then we have uh, the spectrum asymmetry region. So in this case, we don't have any more a fixed um, limit, like in the upper limit here. All these energies define a region that can be coupled inside the grating. So here we can consider that the tail of the Gaussian mode that is striking the first till the ninth tooth are coupled inside the grating coupler. And this gives this um, more gentle decay and lens sharp respect to this uh, right part where we have a fixed point. <clears throat> and uh, we can see this behavior inside the coupling efficiency spectrum. So in the end, uh, we saw how to study grating couplers. And the first uh, um, thing that we can do is to look at the coupling efficiency spectrum. So we can get the, the, the efficiency of our structure at the working wavelength and also the bandwidth. Then if we want to study more deeply the behavior of the structure and why we have different coupling efficiency spectra with different uh, characteristics, we can use a Fourier transform and the band structure. Moreover, we can also try to put this two tool, the Fourier transform and the band structure inside the design routine in order to try to gain control also on the bandwidth and not only on the amount of light that we are able to inject inside the waveguide. So this concludes the, the today's topics. I hope that it was clear and interesting, Ramsey. That was very interesting. <laughs> Um, uh, but before we jump into it, just remind folk that um, there are this is a webinar series, and um, there'll be other talks coming up on different topics. In fact, the next couple of episodes, um, Francesco, um, remind us what they're going to be about. Yeah, uh, we are organizing uh, two more webinars that uh, we have called a special summer session with the partners that we are working in with. And the first one will be in two weeks in July. And uh, the presenter will be Dr. Callum Littlejohn from Cornerstone, that actually is a uh, uh, MCW run. So re really, really interesting. And actually we are working with them on our grating couple of structures. So in this case, uh, we are jumping from the, let's say, design to the so-called foundry perspective. So the idea is to show how these grating couplers can be realized and uh, eventually measure. And uh, in the last episode, the third week of July, uh, we will show you how to put together several devices, several of these, let's say, building blocks in order to realize uh, a working device. So something that you can really use. Wow, super cool. So um, the next episode then is on Tuesday, the 7th of July. And as you hear it there from Francesco, for the first time, you'll hear about packaging from the foundry's perspective. Uh, and um, so yeah, and if you want to access some of our technology, uh, our packaging techniques, that's available to you through your practice. You can get in touch with us. You can go to the website and check it out, mm -hmm. or you can get in touch with us at europractice.org.